elevator removal on a Vision V2, and then we're going to change the gears inside the elevator basket. First step with the unit powered off, we're going to go ahead and raise the elevator basket to its highest point, and we got to disconnect the ribbon cable. If we look underneath the bottom, we have two Phillips screws attached to a plastic bracket which connects the ribbon cable to the 9 pin connector. The plastic bracket. And we just pull straight on the male 9 pin. Now we're going to go ahead and push the elevator basket down somewhere towards the middle. We next need to disconnect two sections of white tracks from the actual cabin. Sometimes there are screws located inside these holes uh, fixing it to the cabin, but sometimes there's not. So what we would do is we would look for a white detent plastic piece, in this case would be here. We push it in and we lift up the track and pull it out of the groove. We'll do the same for the right and left side. Once the tracks are removed, all that's left remaining to do is to lift the elevator basket straight up, to disengage it from its tracks. You can pull the elevator basket straight out. I like to rest it on my thigh while I grab the rope to disconnect the elevator weight. Come on this side. Once the elevator is on my thigh, we can go ahead and disconnect the elevator pulley rope. We simply pull down, sometimes we'd have to play with it because it's a loop that's on a hook. This loop is on a metal tab hooked here. We we'll go ahead and remove it and slowly let it go back into its position. And we've removed the elevator from the vendor. Once we have the elevator on a bench, first thing we want to do is remove the white gears and the white bushing that uh, allow the elevator to ride up and down on both sides. Very important not to lose these bushings. <clears throat> Next we want to do is we can lay the elevator down in this position and we can remove the sign that's located in the front of the elevator. Sometimes they're taped, sometimes they're glued. Just find a little piece of tape. <clears throat> Next up, on the right side of the elevator, we have a little bracket, which is the one that holds the cardboard. We have to go ahead and remove all the screws uh, that are through the indentation, the only ones that you could remove. One, two, remove this bracket. Next, we have to remove the next screws on that same line that we could remove as well. One on the bottom, one towards the top, and one on underneath this lip. Now we can lift straight up and this bracket comes out. We can remove it from the arm here. And let's note the position and the hole was in. Once we have these side removed, we can remove two screws located in the front underneath. a few in the back. We have this piece that hits the trays when the elevator is coming up. It's two screws. And these screws do have a special spacer. Very important not to lose them. And we'll slide this guy right off. Now we have four screws attaching the basket to the actual housing. As far as the screws, we're done. Put the elevator back in its position. Next step, there's a tab in the front that we need to pull down to slide the elevator basket part out. 
We're going to push down and carefully slide the basket out. Now we have access to the gears. Okay. Now the gears that you received uh, with your parts order, you were going to notice that you received two of them and they both look identical and they both look the same. And they both have two notches on one side. It's very important that the rear gear, the notch, goes on the cogwheel that attaches to the motor correctly. Now we're going to do this once it's installed, but I just wanted to make a special note that it only goes in one way. And use the screw that was supplied with your order. We're going to start off with the rear gear. All we have to remove is one Phillips screwdriver. Gonna remove the screw and remove the gear and keep in mind we're going to use the new ones if they were supplied with our order. Now all we have to do is pull on these two metal tabs to disengage one of these parts from its housing. Let's do the left side. Now my gear will slide a little bit awkward out of position and I can go ahead and finish. Should come out fairly easy. grab our new gear. We're going to keep in mind the direction that we removed out where the main gear, the cogwheel goes. We're going to go ahead and insert again our gear through our belt and start on the bottom. And I want somewhat roll it into a position. I like to first put the side that the gear goes on and then we can lift the housing and slide this guy into position. Slide the belt into position. Good to go. Next step we gotta do is install the cog gear. And we're gonna start by putting the cog wheel and rotating it until it lands into its position. I will notice because everything is flat. gear on until it's tight. We can do a belt check. If available, some white lithium grease is not a bad idea to spray it on these parts over here. Keeps everything moving nice and freely. Repeat the steps for the front gear, except you have no cog deal to put. We're going to reinstall the basket into the actual main elevator housing. Let's go ahead and study what's going on down here. We have two tabs that are located in the rear and two notches that are located in the front. When we look at the housing, we have the two notches that the front is going to go in and the male notches are going to slide on these in the back. So it's very important when we're sliding everything in, everything lands into position. If not, we have to move this part till it lands. And the important thing is that this white cog gear cogwheel lands on the black cogwheel for the uh, band motor. Alright, let's see that in action. And we have to hold this down. So we're going to hold this part down. We're going to line up our grooves. We got one here in the front. And one in the back. We're going to push our tab down. We're going to start moving our basket in. Once it gets to the back, it's going to want to land in its grooves. So from in this point, in here, we need to make sure that we're inside those grooves we want to get on. Once the basket is pushed back, or it's not moving no more, we need to adjust those channels in the back. So for the purposes, I'm going to turn it this way so we can see what's going on through this window here. Great. Notice here we can see the tab. This one's aligned. However, the one on the right, on the right side is not aligned. 
If I get a screwdriver and put it on the metal, I'll simply move it and it'll land into its groove. Make sure that the front does as well. And now I can continue with the pushing back motion so that my elevator snaps all into place. I'll make sure that my tabs in the back are aligned. My tabs in the front look aligned. And my logging bar came up. And just reinstall the screws. After this attempt, that we all think it's, everything is done, we can realize that it's not. This front groove here is not located in the rest it needs to be in. So we need to slide it back out a little bit and then put it back into the position.